Thanks for tuning in, everyone. Why are we here today? Uh, we are going to build a pedal board, a smaller pedal board, which we'll come to in a moment. This is Tyler. Tyler is one of my bass students. He's a great player. He also plays guitar. He's in a band called Metropolis and a band called... Well, it's kind of on the side. A, a side band, yeah. an unnamed side secret project. Okay. Um, do you want to say something about Metropolis while you're here? We're amazing. Check us out on Facebook. Yeah. What's the um, What's the website address? It's metropolis-rock.com, I think. I cool know. web address. They'll find anything. it anyway. There's always Google. Yeah. I can always kind of put it on the video at the bottom after yeah. if you're wrong. Yeah. That's a good idea. Okay. <laughs> right. So... Uh, for several years now, I've been carrying around a huge pedal board for my bass, which has been lovingly nicknamed the Mothership by uh, friends and colleagues. Um, and it's just become a bit too much. It's it's very heavy. I could never take it on a plane. Um, on a smaller stage, it's really in the way. And... Um, I just kind of um, well recently I've I've um, endorsed these new pedals from X5. They're very very small and they're extremely high quality, and they got me to thinking that maybe I could actually have a very small pedal board that was actually still quite exciting and still have a lot of sounds on it. So, um, knowing what I'm like, um, when it comes to building that pedal board myself, I thought you know. I'm probably just going to get carried away again. I've got thousands of pedals to choose from, so I'm probably just going to end up building like the world's biggest board again. I probably still have something just as big and just as heavy, but with like a hundred tiny pedals on it instead of like twelve huge ones. So, uh, so I thought I'll get Tyler along. He's a sensible person. He can help me build it, and he can try kind of try and steer me in the right direction and be the voice of common sense. So uh, uh, let's get to building a pedal board. You really have got any more room up here. <laughs> so, so, so that you I can- You run out of room about four pedals ago. <laughs> <laughs> Don't say that. <laughs> um, you're giving me nightmares. So you weren't joking? No. Okay, um, we have of course forgotten something really kind of uh, vital. Power supply. Power supply. Right, okay, so, um, so we've got the power thing under the board, not fastened yet because we don't know if it's going to stay there. We've got a bunch of leads sticking through and to me at the moment I don't think that we've got enough leads here that are going to reach far enough to do what we need. But um, if we stick the pedals on and try and get some kind of arrangement, I'll probably get more of an idea. Okay, so I'll tell you, I'll tell you what I know for definite right now. I know that it works. Um, oh yeah, right. The other thing I need to tell you before I tell you that thing that I need to tell you is I have two loops of effects. So. Um, so what I have is I have some effects that go before the amp and then I have some effects that go in the amps loop because some work better one way and some work better the other way and um, so what I need is I need a chain of effects uh, sort of across the top and chain of effects across the bottom so there'll actually be there'll be a lead from my bass into the tuner and across through all the stuff that goes before the amp then a lead that will go to my rack mount compressor into my amp and then a lead will come out of my loop to whichever pedal is first in line for the loop and then out of the last one back to the loop input on my amp and uh and everyone's a winner so <laughs> easy said than done yeah um now what's the other thing the other thing that i need to tell you is what what i know is that 
um, this might seem like working backwards but for the pedals that need to go before the input stage I know that it works best if this one is last and it works best if this pedal is on this side of the board because it's got um, uh, the output that goes to the amp it's got the um, switches which may or may not need to be pressed in and it's also got the um, XLR out for recording which needs to be accessible so as a starting point I suggest putting this one at this side <laughs> That either goes last or in the back of the rack. If it goes in the back of the rack, it has its own separate power. So, you know, that that's... Um, well, let's just put it there so we don't forget about it. If that's in the back of the rack, then delay would... Be, no, boost would be last. And I, I use another one of these for my boost. I do have this from X5, which is a brilliant boost. Um... But unfortunately, X5 have only sent me one 18 volt adapter, and this phaser is 18 volts. And when you hear that, you you wouldn't leave that off the board. You just couldn't yeah. leave that off the board. It's that's like it sounds like a phase 90. It costs a third of the price of a phase 90, and it's more adjustable. You can do more with it, and it's half the size. So that's a winner, except for the fact that it's 18 volts. So that kind of means that I have to choose between that and the Amplitone. And the Amplitone, whilst it's brilliant, I do think that's something that's probably going to come into its own more on guitar. It could go on my guitar board. And this will do just as good a job of giving me a volume boost. So uh, Layla's been playing with the controls on this. She helped me yesterday cleaning some pedals up. Have you ever fancied having a wah pedal on bass? I don't know. I've considered it, but I've not really thought of any circumstances where I could ever use it. Any practical use for it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> What if we if we start uh, sticking some leads in these to find out whether we really are going to be able to get all these? Pads? Do you think uh, are we being a bit slack here? I mean, we we could actually there's a bit of space like we could stick another pedal in, like if there was a uh, not this one obviously because it's 18 volts but if I stick that there or if I stuck a pedal that size there was that mean that I'm gonna not be able to stand on this I think I'd be able to do that with my heel yeah especially if I go back to cowboy boots like me and Wayne used to wear back in the day <laughs> bit too big yeah I think the nearest thing is the uh, MXR delay the carbon copy which is a gorgeous delay it's uh, to be honest I never thought that I would replace that with anything but this uh, this X5 delay uh, I would have named that you know because like you know like some of the pedals seem to have like a cool name, like you know, like the boost pedal is like the Amplitone, and the Phaser is the Phaser King, but the delay is just delay, <laughs> and it's actually a really awesome pedal. It is an awesome colour, but it deserves an awesome name. <laughs> So, 
What's happened here? Because we seem to have gained space here. Is there, is there a pedal missing? What? No. This one's been moved that way. So this one's moved across as well. And this one's been budged up slightly this way. Right. Because originally the line selector was more here. Right. So. Uh, so there really is there really is room for another pedaling. There is room for like. You know. One more. Small, magic metal box full of. Magic, bass noise fun. Worth of room. <laughs> okay, now then. Um, Tyler is now modelling the back of the pedal board. Do your generation game type. Uh, do you even know what the generation game is, Tyler? No. Are you sure about that? Are you just saying that to make me look older? I don't. I have not a clue what you're on about. Ask your mum later. Okay. I just said your mum's of a certain age. She'll kill me. Okay. <laughs> uh, all right. Just do the modelling thing again. I like that kind of motion. That was very cool. Right. Just to show you, everyone, uh, this is the back of the pedal board. Very excited. Underneath, I guess you should say. Um, now, we've had a bit of a stroke. Look, I didn't think this was going to work. But uh, we've put the, the power thingy, the sort of DC power unit block, whatever whatever we call it, uh, underneath the pedal board. We're going to attach this down with, um, it's already got a piece of Velcro underneath here from where it's been on previous pedal boards. So we're going to put a, a piece of the other side of Velcro. I think we'll call this the lady side of Velcro. Put this on the bottom of the board, stick this down to it, and uh, jobs are good. And I'm just going to peel the back off this lady Velcro. And the slider under here. Now, I want to not cover that gap up there where the leads go through. So is that right? Yeah, about there. Okay. All right, stick that down. Bonus. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, I'll just leave it there. <laughs> so, do you think you're happy with the board? Um, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm happier than I expected to be at this point. I thought that I was going to have to sacrifice a lot of pedals that I love, a lot of um, noises I didn't want to be without. But in actual fact, I've got almost as many pedals on this board as I had on the, on the huge, great big mothership board. The only thing we've done is we've left the wah pedal off, which I do love the bootzilla, but it's not every gig where I need a wah pedal, so... Um, I'm going to leave that separate and on gigs where I am going to use it. In fact, what I'll do, actually, I'll put it in the side pocket on the bag that goes with this board. And if I if you know, if I think the gig is appropriate, I'll take it out and I'll hook it up. It'll go, it'll just attach on before the tuner there. It'll still be in the right position in the, uh, in the loop that goes before the amp. So that's fine. Um, there are a couple of things that I'm in a little bit of pain about leaving off the board, but they are silly things that I never really use in any kind of sensible real gigging situation. So what we've got at the moment is we've got a great set of pedals, all very usable, very practical pedals that I use frequently. Um, it's very nicely wired up. Some of the leads that we've used to wire it together are a bit cheap quality, that's fine, I, I can replace those later. Uh, the point is to get it up and running and, and working and see if this is a practical idea that, that works for me. So I think what we have here is the birth of the uh, the mini the mini mother pedal, uh, the mini mother board. I'll say that bit again. So I think what we have here is the birth of the uh, mini mother. Okay, so we're all up and running. Would you like to talk through pedals? It would be my pleasure. So the Mini Mother 
consists of two loops of pedals. The pedals that need to go before the input stage of the amplifier and the pedals that need to be in the loop of my heart key LH500 which is down here but I think it's just out of shot. Um, anyway the lead will come from my bass, it will go into my Bootsy Collins Signature Wire, the Bootsilla from Snarling Dogs, on gigs where I decide it's appropriate. When it is appropriate it will be on the deck over here next to the board. Um, on gigs where I don't think it is appropriate my bass will go straight into the tuner from X5 which has a very bright screen, calibration options, is extremely accurate, costs next to nothing um, and has a rechargeable battery in it so um, you can kind of let it charge up on your board and then take it in your dressing room, tune up, warm up, stick it back on your board, do your gig and it will tune the low B string of a 5 string absolutely no issue whatsoever. From there we go into the fish and chips pedal from Dan Electro which I use to attenuate the volume of different basses so that no matter what the output is of my bass I've always got the same amount of bass signal hitting the preamp. I don't like to change the settings on the preamp it upsets the guy out front and we really won't want to do that would we? Then we've got a baseballs nano from uh, Electro Harmonics a funky filter. Then we've got a, a Fuzz Screamer from X5, a great noise maker in the uh, loop section of the LS2 so that using the LS2 I can dial in however much clean bass signal I want and however much signal I want from the Fuzz Screamer to taste so that I don't lose all that bass end like you normally do when you add uh, distortion to a bass. Then we've got the preamp from Harkey, the bass attack, which provides me with that little bit of dirt before the amplifier. It uh, gives me a boost here before the amp if I want, uh, a boost before the amp, which will be um, a scooped and dirty sound. The scoop is courtesy of this shape control just here. And the bright control I use when my strings are a little bit dirty. Uh, like they are right now and I forgot to order some more from Rover Sound and I need that bit of zinc putting back in I use the bright control for that we come out of this pedal which by the way is so awesome I have two of these so that I can use one in the studio um, and one in my board we come out of this pedal and we go into the back of the compressor which is a rack mount DBX 160A um, which you know bass players will argue all day long about where the correct place for a compressor is but the truth is the correct place is wherever it sounds best in your setup don't listen to anyone else mess about with your own gear and find out where it works for you uh, I think for me the reason it works best just there is because I've got a lot of spiky noisemakery type sounds before the front end of the amp um, so then we come out of the loop section of the amp and we go into the flange of the BF3 from Boss, which I prefer the BF2 on guitar, but the BF3 on, on bass is just fabulous. Um, and then the Cool Cat from Dan Electro, which no one seems to believe me, but the, um, the Dan Electro Cool Cat is the best uh, chorus pedal I've ever tried on a bass to my ears. And it's also... Um, one of the least expensive ones you could uh, you could find on the market. Then we've got the Phaser King um, from X5 which I've already made a demo video for so you already know just how much I love this pedal. Um, the only thing is the Phaser King is using up my 118 volt adapter at the moment. That's followed by the delay from X5. Um, this, is, um, this is a very very effective very clean delay um, astounded by how cheap it is um, when you when you hear it you would expect it to be three times more expensive then it's followed by the carbon copy which unlike this delay from X5 the MXR does colour your sound it colours it in a good way I do love the sound the tone of it but I only really need one delay on my board the only reason that one is there is because surprisingly there was room for another pedal and I thought if I put another pedal on now then the leads and, and power connector are in place so that when I do find another pedal that I just can't live without putting on my board um, everything will be in place it'll just be a case of, of swapping a couple of things over 
Um, after that, uh, we've got another fish and chips, which I just use as a boost, um, so that if I'm if I'm doing a solo and um, there's no front of house engineer, if I'm just relying on backline and I need a boost, um, this is right before the power amp section of um, of the of my heart kit, which I found is the place to um, to use a boost on a bass. Um, now. I couldn't make up my mind here. There was a bit of, bit of, a, I had a bit of an issue. Um, I wanted to use the X5's Amplitone pedal as a boost just there, um, because the nice thing about it is, um, it's a very effective boost pedal, uh, but it, it's got this uh, tone switch, um, so you can use it as a totally clean boost, or as a sort of gainy, noisy boost. Um, probably comes into its own a little bit more on guitar I think but um, I've tried it live and, and I was really really impressed with it but it's 18 volts I've only got one 18 volts adapter so that had to stay off and the fish and chips does do an effective job of giving me a lift and then I've got a lead from there to the back of my rack and just before the back of my rack the uh, the line doctor will be sat in the back of my rack the Fret King line doctor, which is a buffer, which will boost my signal back up before we hit the return section of the uh, amps loop. Uh, because, you know, using a whole bunch of pedals and all the leads that that entails, um, you probably lose a little bit of signal. So that takes it back up to strength. we we'll go back into the return on the amp. And um, that's my pedals. Okay, so one finished pedal board. Let's pack her away. Snug fit, but look, she goes straight in. Cool. Um, ready for tonight's gig? You coming tonight, dude? Yeah. Well, you never know. I might let you have a go with my new board. The new mini motherboard. There we go. All zipped up and ready to rock. A sort of uh, much lighter, much, much more manageable, carryable, takeable on a plane board. Uh, really made possible by these tiny little pedals from X5, look at that. If I had man-sized hands, it'd look uh, even smaller. Thanks for checking this video out. Tune in again soon.